This weird looking fish is called a fierce snailfish. And that's almost all we know about it, because they live stupidly deep and are hardly ever seen. And so how do they even know it's fierce, when this is only the second time they've ever filmed one, and no one has seen it hunt? And as snailfish are among the deepest diving fish in the world, how do they cope with the pressure? As usual on Induna, I'm going to reveal all the secrets of the deep. Snailfish are a strange group, though, of about 400 species of fish, almost all from the deep sea. And to make matters worse, there are several other types of deep sea fish that they can be mistaken for. Cusk eels and aphonids, for example. But snailfish are more like tadpoles than eels, usually with a big head rather than just a slender eel-like body. Even so, you'd be hard put to distinguish the snailfish from this faceless cusk eel. Although, if you look closely, it has scales. And most snailfish don't. Snailfish get their name from their soft, slimy, jelly-like bodies because they have lost those fish scales. Under the skin there's a gelatinous matrix helping to increase buoyancy. It has a special way to absorb pure water, which is lower density than seawater, and so it floats. Their skeleton too is much reduced compared to other fish. Scientists think it's all in a quest to lose weight, so they can float effortlessly in the deep sea and don't waste energy trying to swim up. It does make them a vulnerable snack though, should anything big bump into them in the deep. Oops. And why have they got eyes in a world of darkness? Light from the surface can't penetrate deeper than a few thousand feet. The answer is that even in the deep, tiny flashes of light from other creatures glow like stars. And this is what you'd see if you were a snailfish without any human lights on. They're using their eyes to spot the faint bioluminescence of other creatures, something that goes on constantly in the deep, and it helps them sense movement, find food, and most likely other mates too. Typically for sea creatures that hunt in the dark, they're bristling with sense organs. Look closely at their mouths, you'll see deep, wide pits. Although they're like the electroceptors found in the snouts of sharks, they're much bigger. But like sharks, these large sensory indentations most likely help the fish detect water movement and pressure changes in the dark. And those bristles regularly arranged around the face give them chemical cues, as if they were tasting the water. If you look at this salmon snailfish kept in the aquarium at Monterey, California, you can see it's using its bristles to taste the sea floor for food. And although scientists haven't shown it for sure, it's likely that it also uses sensory pits in its face to find prey from a distance. Most snailfish aren't picky eaters. They suck up small crustaceans, worms and other deep sea creatures, even dead stuff, using their finely tuned senses to track down food in the darkness. Among snailfish, the Genioliparis species, aka the fierce snailfish, stand out. In truth, there's not a lot known about it, as I said, but it's likely that it has similar features to others of its kind in the same genus, and they have been found to have very sharp, pointy teeth, transparent too, and teeth like that and strong muscular jaws are characteristics of the deep-sea fish that are active hunters rather than merely scavengers. So it could be a more active hunter than we think, and a top predator that deserves that fierce nickname. One particularly interesting similar species also has tiny spine-like structures called spinules embedded in its skin. These might help it sense water movements too across its body and improve swimming, or perhaps are even a defence against predators to compensate for the loss of scales. Snailfish didn't always look this way, of course. Long ago, their ancestors had scales, but over time, they lost them. Scientists believe this happened because scales weren't needed in their deep-sea environment. Apparently, once a fish loses its scales, it hardly ever evolves them again. And other early fish didn't start with scales either. 
they had bony plates for protection. Over millions of years, different fish evolved in different ways, some keeping their armour, others becoming smooth and flexible like the snailfish. The more you look, the more you find snailfish have some extraordinary adaptions to the deep sea. The deepest fish ever found was a snailfish in the Izu Ogasawara Trench near Japan. It was at over 5 miles or 8 kilometres deep. Usually that would be a problem because the pressure there is about 800 times that at the surface, so strong that it can force proteins in the cells out of shape which could be lethal to the fish. But deep sea fish like the snailfish have a secret formula that saves them. TMAO or trimethylamine and oxide which is a special chemical they produce that stabilizes proteins in the depths. It seems as if it forms chemical struts which keep the molecules the right distance apart so they can function. But the deeper they go the more TMAO they need and the theoretical limit is just over five miles deep where the deepest snailfish was found. It has to be said that some other scientists have found that some deep sea fish don't need TMAO but have instead multiple copies of genes that help them stay in the deep. It's still early days with this research but there's no doubt that these fish have something special to be able to stay at pressures of over a thousand atmospheres and temperatures between 1 and 4 centigrade. 33 to 39 Fahrenheit. It's cold down there. On land, cold-blooded lizards would have to warm up if they were at this temperature, but these fish are able to function with special enzymes, not only under the pressure, but in the cold. And as you can see, they're moving quite fast. Some of you may have heard of much greater depth reports for fish, and this may have come from the Trieste deep sea dives of the 1960s, when Jacques Picard and Don Walsh took a bathysphere down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench at nearly 11,000 metres or over 36,000 feet, about seven miles, and they said they saw a flatfish on the bottom. Scientists now say they were mistaken and that they were mainly engineers, not biologists. But it might have been something like a sea cucumber that they saw rather than a fish. By the way, what's a sea cucumber doing so deep? And since then, no one has ever reported a fish that deep, let alone a flatfish. It seems that fish can't really go deeper than five miles. And despite their clever tricks, the pressure eventually gets to them. Even so, I think you'll agree that snailfish are masters of their environment, the deepest of the deep sea fish. And although we hardly ever see them except through the skillful use of these ROVs, remote vehicles, in the deep, it may be that they're far more numerous and more active than we ever knew. And like everything, it seems, that lives in the deep, they appear a bit weird. In fact, scientists also call the fierce snailfish, the weird fish, too. But of course, it's beautifully adapted to an environment where you think it would seem almost impossible to live. <laughs>